All right, everyone, welcome back from the episode of Carnivore Trade. Today is Monday, September 19th, 2022. If you've not done so already, give it a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Uh, also, Cycles Course uh, review webinar will be uh, next week. I'm shooting for next Sunday at 12 p.m. I did a little poll uh, with the members, so it looks like that's going to be the, the time that we're going to go with. Um, we'll give it another day or so, and then we'll... Confirm that, but if you missed the first one, you want to uh, get in on that. Um, you can watch the recording uh, if you if you purchase now. You'll watch the full recording for that on the website, and you can be included in this one as well if you can't make either of them, or if you can't make this one, I should say. Um, the recording will be posted as well. So, anyways, let's get into the markets here. Um, again, there's not too much to discuss today. If you look at this and take it for face value. You can see we have a bullish engulfing candle here on the daily. We gap down into double bottom and, you know, we're having a nice rally here. But on the intraday, it kind of paints a little bit more of a boring picture really up until the last 20 minutes or so. This was just a flat sideways market here. And really my kind of analysis of the situation at this point is this is all noise tomorrow is noise as well um we could rally 100 points from here we could sell off 100 points from here and jay powell can erase that with one comment so let's not get too excited about any sort of move in either direction here uh take a look at the volume here just 48 million shares traded on the spy at 3 20 p.m so that tells you you know that the story right there the volume is very light volumes light on the futures too you know so we're not we're not seeing um you know major you know, institutional participation and that makes sense right i mean powell's going to move the market wednesday so really what happens from here on out is kind of just you know the market's on autopilot right now so let's not get too excited let's not make anything out of it um if you ask me today and tomorrow are pretty much just nothing burgers from a technical standpoint maybe we could go but you know at this point if assuming the gains hold into the close we you know it's likely we go up there and fill that gap tomorrow um just based off of our reflex bounce we are a little bit oversold here uh, it'll be very interesting to see if we uh back test this trend line uh if we get a bid off the fomc if that's where maybe it wants to go you also have the 20 and 100 down sloping so those are your kind of immediate resistance areas after you hit that short term you know gap fill area which is the obvious you know kind of hourly resistance um I wouldn't call this necessarily major, you know, maybe it might make for a good scalp here, especially if we get up into that uh, by the close or, you know, early tomorrow if we gap into that. So it um, could be a little day trading area to keep an eye on. But overall, let's not make too much out of the action. Again, it's just, you know, here's a triple Qs here. Same kind of deal. We went into that 7.5 retrace off the lows uh, last Friday, and we're getting a bit off that. Okay, let's not make too much out of it. Um, everything can really, you know, change here again with just one comment by by powell so um, again let's not make too much out of it uh semiconductors here up 60 basis points so again continuing to bid off the lows nice little game there for the smh igv getting defended here although a little bit on the weaker side is having lesser of a day only up uh, 25 basis points here today um, so barely just holding the flat line there is cloud software um so look at adobe yeah adobe still kind of soft here down one percent this has just been uh been getting killed since that buyout talk but um yeah cloud definitely on the weaker side there uh let's look at biotech xbi yeah nice little fade there on xbi still holding that green bar low there's not a terrible pullback pattern here for xbi um all things considered even on the um on the weekly the only problem with it is that the trend is trend is definitely down but um you do have a potential bullish inside bar there on the biotech weekly time frame uh dow transports here uh so you know two percent gain there nice little rebound you know it was oversold it was already getting beat up and then to get that hit on the fedex news um it got really oversold there and you had a nice little bounce again short term area is going to be that gap fill that should be good resistance there um it's also a head and shoulder pattern so um that would be kind of back testing that neckline so that is in play now. So if you know if this gets up here, if you want to take a short at that, I have no no problem. Um, you know, you could use like the IYT or something like that uh, to short the transports, and then you got a tight stop. You know, you just stop out if it, you know, if you get a close above that uh, that neckline. But um, in any case, Dow Transports getting a decent little reflex bid today, up just under two percent. Uh, interest rates here, ten-year yield is up one and a quarter. Thirty-year actually negative a little bit. Um, Let's not make too much out of it today. We do have the twos and tens. 
with a pretty good uh, increasing spread. So down 46 bips now. This is almost half a percent uh, inverted. So pretty, pretty wide spread there. Uh, three month and 10 year did get a little bit of a relief, but still in this bearish kind of channel. And then uh, tens in, or excuse me, fives and thirties reversing as well. And um, 10, or uh, yes, you do tens and thirties also getting a reversal down today in addition to the fives. But um, overall, again, this will move off the FOMC. Again, we're not going to make you know, too much out of any of this stuff here. HYG getting a little bit of a bit up a third of a percent. So getting a reflex bounce there as well. Home Builders, XHB up just over one and a half. ITB, same thing, up 2%, getting a little bit more of a bounce there. Um, you got a little bit of resistance at gap window, 20 moving average. And then above that, there's that former pivot and that 100 moving average there on the ITB daily. BNQ, a little bit on the softer side. So just like, you know, two weeks ago, this one was the outperformer. Then it got slammed and now it's underperforming. And now it's underperforming again. So down 30 basis points um, in an up market. So this one's been kind of all over the map, but, um, you know, definitely showing some weakness here. By the way, again, I'm seeing this pattern on a lot of charts, by the way. But, you know, there's a, that's a clear triggered head and shoulders there as well. So, um, you know, we talked about it on, you know, the IGV. You know, right there, uh, Dow Transports, you know, even the spiders, you know, right there as well. Um, Microsoft. All right, so head and shoulders on a lot of these charts here. So we got to be careful with this market moving forward. Uh, but anyways, VNQ, we talked about that. So XLF here, nice engulfing reversal for XLF up just under 1%. Uh, nice little gap down and a pretty good surge off the lows. Uh, had a really good bid in the first 10 minutes today. Yeah, so a nice little pop off the lows and Really has gone sideways to flattish, but not a terrible pattern here for a possible move up tomorrow on the XLF broker dealers. Same kind of deal, a little bid down into that 50 and then possibly trying to put in a little daily chart higher low there. All right, energy. So crude did get a little bit of a dip here. I did not get back into this. I was looking for it to get a little bit lower, but you know, overall I had a nice little bid off the lows. It's kind of just hanging in there on the daily, hanging into that trend line there. We'll see what kind of pattern this gets. I think everything gets kind of a um there will be kind of a shakeout or some type of a move here after the fomc and that's when i'm going to kind of look at things um but you know crude getting a nice little bit off the lows um you know today trying to put in a daily chart higher low anyways uh xle uh gap down and then you know coming back up towards the flat line here down just 15 basis points right now um you know again let's not make too much out of it notably a little bit on the weaker side though oih actually getting a little bit of a bid uh, up one percent today so nice recovery there um, but yeah energy definitely on the weaker side of things here um, relative to the rest of the market anyways nat gas a little bit of a dip this morning and then a decent recovery again we'll see if it can get back above that trend line if you can close back above this trend line that would negate that head and shoulder pattern but for right now that is in play to about 650 so we'll be watching that one for a dip i would consider a long at that area uh, depending on how we get into it. But uh, for today, nice little uh, dip and reversal there for Nat Gas. Dollar index, um, again, nothing burger. Gapped up this morning a little bit um, by the 9.30 open, I should say, and then kind of a little dip here intraday and then just kind of going sideways. So again, still bullish inside bar right now on the daily. Trend is up. No problems outside of the fact that it is parabolic on pretty much every time frame. Uh, gold here, again, nothing burger off the lows. It's flat, um, you know, gap down on the GLD there and then kind of a rally back. Gold miners are holding up a lot better. GDX up almost one and a quarter. GDXJ up 1.75. So that does get my attention a little bit. Again, don't want to make too much out of it ahead of the FOMC, but we've been seeing this theme recurring, right? This is this is a recurring theme. So it's not like this is just today's price action that this is happening um, this is something we've been noting that the miners are leading the metal right now. Uh, silver as well. Love the inside bar. I want to see a little bit more bacon in the oven and <laughs> bacon in the oven. Um, sometimes I like to fry it. Sometimes I bake it in the oven. But anyways, um, a nice bullish inside bar there above the 50 moving average. Um, bake in the oven a little bit more. And then uh, this can have legs for a move up here uh, with silver having a decent day up half a percent. Uh, and platinum as well up to it and a half just under two and a half and we're kind of watching right now this trend line i'll put it back on the daily so you can see it better uh there we go so you know right there going back to 2021 nice little tag tag 
tried to get above it, you know, couldn't sustain it, and now we're back testing it again. So we may get a little pullback here in platinum, but overall, I love the pattern. I am bullish platinum right now. I am long uh, via PPLT and nicely in the money on the second half. I already have profits taken on the first half. Um, and really just letting this one run because I think this one has uh, much, you know, much more upside here. Um, anyways, palladium, nice gain, up 6%. Got to get above this pivot. You know, you got to get above these levels on palladium. So right about there. So just around 2,300. You get above that, and then this has some legs to a move up to maybe 25, 2,600. Uh, but a nice little reversal there for spot palladium. Spot copper here up just 16 basis points. You could make a case that you know you have if as long as this low doesn't get taken out you have higher lows but you also have kind of a up move and then possible you know you can make a case as a little flag pattern here um, so we'll be watching that for a move up but overall um, charts a little bit neutral here i you know you really want to see it make a higher high um, for it to have legs to move up but right now you know let's not make too much out of it it's hanging in there for the time being uh, and then Bitcoin here on the softer side, again, although it's coming off the lows here, but it did come down and basically test the lows of the year, um, or at least, you know, pretty close to it. The low of the year was 17.689, and we got down to 18.256. So, you know, that's actually pretty close for Bitcoin, really. That's not that far away. Uh, but it did have a nice little rally back up to the flat line. Looks like they might save that green bar low there. Uh, 19307 so you want to see it stay above that by the close tonight um, for that little green bar to be saved which will give you a, a micro kind of I guess a, a positive for Bitcoin here in the near term but again I showed you guys this over the weekend weekly bearish consolidation and monthly bearish and sidebar so technically speaking this is still not a good chart here um, but again We'll see what we get here going into the FOMC. All right, let's get back over to the spiders. It's now 3.30 p.m. And we're getting a little bit more of a bid here, up 70 basis points now. So a nice little rally here. Um, we'll see if it gets up into that gap by the close. Um, that will be short-term resistance there uh, for possibly like a scalp or something like that. Um, but again, we'll see what we get tomorrow. Let's not make too much out of today's price action uh, because Jay Powell can change everything with one comment. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. Come find me on carnivaltrades.com. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.